Top 10 Sexiest Bionicles. No. Benjamin's Wall Street Bets tier list. This? Wait, didn't we? I don't know if we watched this or not. member of Wall Street Bets like myself, your personal experience <clears throat> with YOLOs is most likely as such. Losing the entire position? Or losing the entire position? Mm. From infinite money glitches to million dollar option plays with mere days until expiration, I'll be the first to say that it's going to be difficult to place any of these legendary you trades price. below S tier. Let's start this off right. Control the narrative. How did Control the Narrative become a Wall Street Bets legend? Simple. By exploiting a Robin Hood glitch to so $50,000 uh, of you. borrowed money with no collateral. You heard me right. This legend used a goddamn Robin Hood infinite money glitch to borrow $50,000 from Robin Hood with only $2,000 in his account. After leveraging his account to meet his personal risk tolerance, Control the Narrative went on to engage in the most famous what? Wall Street Bets YOLO in history. He bought $50,000 in Apple puts just before they reported quarterly earnings. Unfortunately for Control the Narrative, Apple crushed their earnings and the stock rocketed up in after hours trading. For our sake, at Market Open, this legend decided to record his loss live and capture this <laughs> priceless moment. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> losing a quick $50,000 of borrowed money. If you listen very carefully, you can even hear the shit that the soul exits the husk. <laughs> The legend of Control the Narrative is, of course, an undisputed S tier. There yeah, that's no pretty good. On the internet where you can watch stuff like this unfold. Pioneers like Control the Narrative willing to risk everything to entertain us and for a shot at a better life. And for that, Control the Narrative takes his spot with the legends on the S tier. If I was Hayek, though the game stop the fiasco might have you believe that the Wall Street Bets boys are righteous warriors looking to take down the evil short sellers betting against the economy, you could not be more wrong. If you were on Wall Street Bets during the beginning of Corona, you know that there was no lack of degenerates making blood money hand over fist as 401ks evaporated, businesses collapsed. I only know about the big ones from Wall Street One Bets. One specifically retarded trader known as If I Was Hayek saw the impending crisis before anyone else could. Expecting the downfall of cruises and theme parks, this lucky degenerate dropped $150,000 puts on Disney and Carnival. Within days of the bat virus beginning to ravage the United States, wow. If I Was Hayek's initial investment rocketed to over $4 million. With that kind of money, he could have taken the coward's way out, investing in an S&P Virgin fund and collecting an easy $200,000 per year. However, If I Was Hayek was far from satisfied, holding his puts with diamond hands. You can probably guess where this story goes. Jesus In just a month, stimulus packages, PPP loans, and Jerome Powell's money printer destroyed all of his puts, leaving him with $20,000 in a graph that looked like Satan's erection. This is like the entire history, the entire story of everyone on Wall Street bets and the, uh, well, early crypto bros, I guess. Not, not so much now, it's all NFTs for them. It's like this diamond hands thing where they always think that you just have to hold forever and it'll be worth billions and it happens every single fucking time just like this. I still am so happy that I always hated that mentality. I sold that doge right before Elon Musk went on uh, SNL. Oh my god, it was a triumph. And meanwhile, everyone else just ate that loss. Diamond hands is a curse, not a blessing. This is everyone's fucking story from Wall Street Bets, man. It's tough. Truly hilarious. Despite being a very moving story, If I Was Hayek's trade lacks the incredible backstory of Thanks some of the YOLOs on this list. And for that, I think this trade wins itself a place right in the C tier. Anal Farmer 2. Icarus was so intoxicated by the experience of flight that he flew too close to the sun. His wings melting as he fell into the sea and drowned. Except GME is farm. the legendary one, obviously. Risky out of the money options with two days until expiration. Anal Farmer, a mere 19 year old at the time with $110,000 in his Robin Hood account from online business, decided to YOLO all $110,000 on a line technology call options with merely days until expiration. By some miracle, the next day a line announced accelerated stock buybacks leading the share price to rocket upwards. In 24 hours, 
Anal Farmer more than doubled his Let's go, Anal Farmer. $80,000. Yeah. Balanced over $340,000 in total. Thinking logically, recognizing his insane luck, and looking from an outside perspective, Anal Farmer realized he couldn't be satisfied with almost half a million dollars at 19 years old. So he made a very wise decision to drop $170,000 into spy puts expiring the next day. In another stroke of insane luck, the next day Mango Man announced new tariffs which tanked the entire market. While most traders were considering going long rope, Anal Farmer was sitting on a $277,000 gain. Fuck! His total portfolio value to $646,000. He's cruising! Intoxicated by the prospect of that million dollar screenshot, Anal Farmer let emotions cloud his judgment. Shortly after making more than half a million dollars in less than a week, he decided to YOLO $700,000 into out of the money spy calls expiring in one day. <laughs> oh some my of you god. Are who may not understand what that means. That's like incomprehensibly retarded. <laughs> that means every second the share price is below your strike price. You're literally burning money. And his money did burn. $500,000, in fact, leaving him with $200,000 to lose. And over the next few weeks, he did lose. Approximately $100,000 of his account balance, leaving him with just around 40000 At this point, down from his high of $750,000, Anal Farmer was left with only 50% of his initial investment. Would that stop him? Of course not. Anal Farmer had developed a plan to regrow his wealth more stably and conservatively. Is he was destined to succeed. What was that plan? To YOLO the remaining $40,000 on call options for a weed stock right before earnings. As you could probably predict, he lost everything. <laughs> Anal Farmer's YOLO represents a great... Oh, damn it! That's YOLO. He was the and best the of us! ...may not be as remarkable as Control the Narrative or some of the other competitors on this list. It's a beautiful YOLO, and we can't help but tip our hats to Anal Farmer and pray that he didn't commit suicide after going dark on Reddit. WSB. God bless Anal Farmer. In April of 2019, this diamond-handed degenerate bought $26,000 worth of Tesla 450 Leap call options expiring in 2021. To some of the new hey, sub that may not seem completely insane, keep in mind, however, that Tesla at the time was trading at around $50 per share. By August, WSB God was down 60% on his position. After losing over $10,000, he did what anyone would do if they were mentally slow. He doubled down on his position and held the line. In WSB God's case, he was rewarded. As Tesla mooned through the winter, his initial $40,000 investment grew to over $1.3 million. Fuck! That wasn't enough. In Holy January, shit! WSB God bought 120000 in Tesla calls at the $1,000 strike, expiring in just two months. They called him a madman, another delusional autist caught up in the rush of quick gains. What happened? Tesla rocketed to over $900 per share in the next month, bringing WSB God's portfolio value to almost four and a half million dollars from an initial $40,000. Oh my God, he's killing investment. it! There's some speculation as to whether or not WSB God faked his gains in an attempt to uphold his reputation as the God of Wall Street bets. And for that unfortunate reason, we simply can't offer him a position amongst the true legends. WSB God's YOLO lands himself right in the C tier. If there's what? one man who has the, the fuck power just to happened? make calls print, it's Elon Musk. And that was Dedula's plan exactly. After maxing out two credit cards and a home equity line of credit, Dedula planned to sit back with $90,000 in Tesla calls and let Elon blast them to Valhalla during the Cybertruck reveal. Except that didn't happen. On Cybertruck launch day, Tesla stock dropped 4% after hours. The next day, our hero Dedula decided to live stream the market open to assess the damage. As you can see, he lost almost all of his money, most of which was borrowed from high interest creditors. Less than a month after the Cybertruck play, Dedula's portfolio was down to less than $30,000 and that's he was right. fired from his job. No, Realizing that's he needed a fine. more secure job that would give him consistent worry free he got Reddit up he could count on. Dedula decided to disregard all of that and start day trading options professionally. In December, Dedula put his faith in Elon once again, dropping 80% of his portfolio into Tesla 400 calls expiring in March. In just one week, Dedula made over $80,000 as Elon took Tesla to the moon. 
In the end, Dejula was able to cash out over two hundred thousand. Oh, he cashed out. Profit, paying off his many loans as well as his Model Three before quitting day trading for good. A He's, heartwarming. He didn't look at the road a single time during this. Is, is he in the back? No, he's definitely in the driver's seat. Does this car just drive itself completely, like, autonomously? If you're real they kinda drama, do? YOLO options professionally to make it all back. An idea that many members of Wall Street Bets have taken to heart. For a few of them, it's worked kind of. Dejula, you win your place in the B tier. There are very few members of Wall Street Bets that are so autistic they force Robin Hood to completely change their platform. Irony Man, however, was one. In pursuit of a risk-free arbitrage opportunity, this legend was attempting to trade box spreads. If you don't understand how box spreads I don't know what that work, is. Don't worry. Irony Man didn't know either. <clears throat> All you need to know is that it's what led him to lose over 2,000% of his initial investment. It's also what made Robin Hood disable his account and permanently ban box spreads from the platform entirely. This degenerate lost almost 20 times what he initially invested, resulting in this what? beautiful screenshot and this incredible message from the Robin Hood team. It takes a unique trader to lose 20 times their initial investment change an entire brokerage platform, and get a Robinhood account disabled. Irony Man will forever go down as a legend in Wall Street Bet's history. How the fuck does that, that, I don't, what, is, what is a box spread? Tier. Deep fucking value. Oh, How we god damn. we make a tier list for legendary Wall Street yeah. Bet's YOLOs without including the fabled deep fucking value? The YOLO to end all YOLOs. The YOLO that made both Ted Cruz and AOC act like they care about hedge funds screwing retail investors over. A truly iconic moment in Wall Street Bet's history. For deep fucking value, is he still holding? Began the way most great trades do on Wall Street bets. The perfect combination of Adderall and testosterone fueled greed. He invested fifty thousand dollars into GameStop leap call options as the stock tanked to its lowest level in history. With diamond hands, words like negative cash flow and bankruptcy just could not shake this stubborn degenerate. <laughs> Despite many other Wall Street bets, oh god, yeah, crazy and yes. Crazy retard. He really deep went for it. Value held the line. So is he is deep fucking value still holding? I, I don't even know what I'm asking. I'll just look it up. Oh, actually, I'll do DFE. I think that's what he. I think that's what he is on here. <clears throat> this is him, right? It's been seven months using ableist words so edgy. That's what the community calls themselves, man. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. He was advised to stop uploading. Was he? Oh, because he had to testify in Congress, did he? What? What is the stock at? GME's resting at 196. So even if he didn't cash out at 400, he still made like an, he still has an incredible fucking profit. That's crazy. That's fucking crazy. Oh, I was so close to getting in on that when I first heard about that. Matt brought it up to me when it was like it. I think it was like 20 or something dollars. I was like, nah, it's stupid. It's never going to work. Imagine. Just imagine. Fuck. It's not over. Goddamn right it's over. Are you serious? Five signs you're attractive, even if you don't think so. Uh, all right, let's see. Hey, Psych2Goers, welcome back to our channel. According to statistics, only a small percentage of you who watch our videos are subscribe, actually subscribed. Yeah. If you're not subscribed Sad. yet and you enjoy what you see, do consider hitting the subscribe button. I'll think about it. This encourages it. YouTube's algorithm in promoting more of our mental health content to more people out there. Have you ever wondered if you're attractive? So, how can you tell if you are attractive? This one's even if much more wholesome than I so. thought it would be. Here thought there was going to be alpha male shit. You really are attractive, even if you don't think you are. Number one, when you look at photos <laughs> of yourself <laughs> from months ago as compared to now, you think you looked better then. Have you ever browsed through your social media only to stumble upon a months old photo of yourself with friends? Nope. You do a double take because you surprisingly look better than you thought you did at the time. <laughs>
happening all around you, but that you might not be noticing. And those signs actually mean that you're more attractive than you think. Like number all one, right. for example, people asking you a lot of questions when they're curious. Oh, where did you go to school? What's your favorite type of music? How was your day? What have you been up to? Oh, really? Where are you from? You know, these might seem like small questions and small talk, but if a girl or anyone else is continuously asking you and she's... Even or you're just you very answers, interesting. Then, hey, I'm just saying, she's probably attracted to you. The thing is, girls have so many guys hitting on them at all times, right? So they're just like, if they don't want to talk to you, they're not going to talk to you. They're not going to waste their... That's boring. Give me some cool ones. One of the signs is women throw their panties at you hmm? what's another like alpha male topic it's been a while since we've checked out alpha male rabbit hole give me something what do we want to learn we've already looked up like all the how to get laid shit sigma males went extinct all the sigma male youtubers gave up or not i guess i guess there's still a few when it became a big meme they all stopped five ways weak guys try to act alpha and the crazy thing is that in high school, this actually works pretty well for the guy because- This is boring. Give me something cool. Isn't this Sigma Alpha Beta stuff? Well, yeah, obviously there's nothing real about Sigma Alpha and Betas. It's just astrology for men. It's goofy. It's silly. It's fun. Former Marine stopped Arm Robber at Arizona Gas Station. This is the video I was talking about where he used Viper techniques. All right, let's see. If he's a former Marine, I can tell you he didn't use Viper techniques. He's a fucking Marine. What? I'll still watch, but there's no way he's like, yeah, thanks Detroit Threat Management. Couldn't have done it without you. Oh, I've seen this video. Yeah, it's not like a Viper exclusive technique or anything. That's like, he just really went for it. He's also extremely lucky that this guy wasn't looking to kill someone because he easily could have right here. He missed the gun entirely. He could have easily just shot him here, but he just holds the gun away from him because he's clearly not looking to kill someone. Like, they actually do look like kids. In fact, this is a really good example of how inefficient anything the, like the, that they teach at Detroit Threat Management is. He unsuccessfully gets the gun. And do you know why? It's because normal people don't just hold it still like locked in a fixed position. What happened when he went for the gun is it pushed his hand up and he keeps the gun. This kind of thing just will never work in the real world. It just doesn't. But he's very lucky he didn't die right then and there. Extremely lucky. Cause he had an easy opportunity to just shoot him. And it, this is really misleading that they say that he disarmed him. Yeah, the gun also wasn't pointed at him, which was very lucky. Top 50 greatest curling shots. I'll watch like the top two. I bet this is going to be fucking hype. Champion oh, fuck! Jesus Christ! Wait, what's number one? I want to get excited. Vintage. That was dog shit placement. Or it was good, maybe. Well, this is very difficult. There's one thing to throw a run back, but isn't America like the number one curling on the nation in the world? So here we go. This is it. Final stone in ten. Brad Gushu, this is all he's got. Run back, try. Bang it's Canada. Is it Canada? I thought America always took the gold for curling. Yeah, curling seems fun. No. Whoa! 
He's going for it. Jesus. A 7 10 split. She will be Canadian champion if she makes this shot. Don't fuck it up. Come on, Patty. Oh, God damn. It's going. Oh. That was fucking awesome. You're talking about Apatow, right? Yeah. This is really sad. I only just learned about this. So Apatow posted this video and then a couple days later he actually did die. They, if you're not familiar with his channel, he's the guy, I'm sure you've seen his videos. He's the guy that like drinks vodka out in the snow and stuff. He uh, was found, I think it was like under the, I or no. He was found at like one of the frozen lakes that he would like visit to do these videos. So it's assumed he was filming some of his content there and maybe he just fell through the ice and died. It's, it's sad. But yeah. Apatow did pass away.